A lot of people ask me when it comes to Zoom calls. A lot of people are doing sales calls when they're uh, on Zoom calls. And a lot of people ask me like, hey, Sean, what does the body language around the head actually signify? Well, in this video, I'm actually going to share exactly all the uh, basics in body language when it comes to the head, how the head's moving, when we touch the head. So we're going to talk about that. Stay tuned. This is a good one. What's happening, Sales of Center? Sean here, back at you with another high ticket tune up. Hope you had a great weekend. We're back off to another awesome week. Today, we're going to dive into everything the head, right? We're going to talk about the basics and body language for the head, how to use it in sales, what it means, and everything else. That's all good, right? So, uh, first and foremost, I just want to uh, throw the question up here. So, the question, you know, like I get quite often, what is the uh, uh, the body language uh, when it comes to actually the head, like what does that actually mean? So um, if you stick with me here, we're going to dive into it pretty deeply. Let's get going. All right. So what does it mean when the, the head starts to move in body language? So here's a quick overview of everything the head that we need to know about. So first and foremost, um, the head can uh, signal disagreement when a head movement goes in one direction or another. It can sometimes uh, signify disagreement. It can also signify truth. Um, it can also signify soothing. Like when we touch our head in a certain way, which I'm going to dive into in just a second. When you see people doing this, it can be a soothing thing. Maybe that you found the solution to the problem or what have you. It can also signify doubt, wonder, comfort, and dis belief, right? So there's all these things that we need to be aware of. And if we know what we're looking for, then it's very easy to be able to determine exactly uh, the body language that's coming after us when we're in the sales call. So these are the kinds of things that we want to look for uh, when we're looking at the head. Let's keep going. Oh, the last one, I guess, is also overwhelmed. So there's some things with overwhelm and ventilation. I should, That's a pro tip. I'll show you the ventilation here at the end. But those are the things that the head would signify as in an overview of uh, everything that we can see. So first of all, let's talk about nodding and patting, right? So a lot of people nod and pat their heads. So when people nod, it can signal, yes, I'm in agreement with you. In fact, Russell Brunson, one of my coaches, he always said, what you want to do is you want to, when you're speaking on stage, is you want to see the whole auditorium bobbing their heads, nodding their heads forward in agreement. One of the tips that he shared with us is, is when you're doing a stage presentation, you want to use words like right, or doesn't that make sense? Or you want to ask these questions where they have to answer yes. And eventually they're going to start nodding in agreement. This is a, a subliminal signal to them without them even knowing like, hey, yeah, this guy is making sense. This is truth. This is right. And this is going to help create agreement and engagement. So when you see somebody start to nod, that usually means understanding and it can signal like I'm in agreement with what you're saying without them saying anything important. Secondly is contradiction. So you can have somebody nodding forward, but watch their lips. When you watch their head start to bob nodding forward like in agreement with you, look at their lips. If their lips go and get tight when they purse, this means they could be just falsifying the whole truth thing and saying, yeah, I, I see you making a point, but I don't agree with it. But they're just not going to nod their head this direction. So when the head nod goes, the second thing I look at is the lips and I see if they're pursing or, or tightening up. And if I know that, then typically as a sales professional, it's going to cause me to go in and ask a few more questions. Next one is uh, mentally conflicted. So when people start to pat on their head, um, we usually find that we're mentally conflicted. You've seen people kind of go like this, like you're know, kind of show you it's like this. Sometimes it's even a harder pat, like, like, right? Like there's that frustration, there's that conflict. If you see somebody going like this or like patting their head, or even if they're doing it kind of like somewhat almost soothing, but like more of a pat, that means they might be mentally conflicted and it would just signal me to continue asking questions. So anytime somebody touches their head, I'm watching very closely to see if they're patting, they're stroking, if they're if they're nodding, if their lips are pursed and so on and so forth. Okay, let's move on to scratching, holding and stroking. So you can scratch your head, you can hold your head and you can stroke your head. There's three different ways to do this, right? And so first and foremost, if you find someone scratching, it typically represents they're doubting something. So if you see scratching, ask more questions around like, ah, man, doesn't seem like that made sense to you. Um, I see you kind of scratching your head there. Don't be afraid to call out the body language because when you call it out, 
people draw attention to it and all of a sudden it's almost like you caught them in in some some sort of a not really a lie but you just caught them and you're observant and what will happen is it will create this level of truth in the conversation to where they're like oh man like he's actually watching what i'm doing or she's watching what i'm doing she's very aware of this like she must be very good at what she does typically when people are observant and they stay very aware uh, this is where you will start to crush more sales deals. So if you see scratching typically represents doubt. Uh, so you just want to ask a few more questions. Next, if you see stroking, if you see people, girls typically will stroke the back of their hair, they'll grab it in their hand, they'll pull it out like this, or you know, like the hair, like they'll, they'll go like guys usually go like this. Sometimes I go like this, just over the top. When you see the stroking, it's a soothing motion. Now, soothing could mean that they just may have established a pathway to a right answer, or maybe they've actually got the right answer, or they just know that they're in the right place. Um, you know, sometimes it's it's about appearance. They want themselves to be appearing nicely, so they'll stroke their hair like this just to make sure that it's nice, and it'll remind them, like, hey, I'm soothed, like my body, my hair is in the right place. So when you see stroking, typically that means that's soothing. So you do want to look for the stroking of the head because you'll find that lots of people are typically soothing. When we look at interlace, this one is crazy, but the, the the secret is this. When somebody goes interlaced and they go over the top, right? Ah, you've seen this one before. I know a million times, but I'm just going to share with you. When someone does this, it means they're extremely comfortable. They're leaving their entire front of their body open to you, which means, hey, I have nothing to hide. I'm totally comfortable in this situation. You see sometimes people do it on the couch. They go like this. Um, and it also typically means ownership you'll usually find the very high D dominant personality types or the people that are commanding CEOs and some of these types of people that almost have that arrogant attitude. They're going to be the ones that are typically doing this just to say, oh, okay, tell me what you got. So what are you doing? What are you saying? Right. And they'll, they'll just sit there in the conversation and it's a sign that they own the conversation. They own the room. They own you. And so when you see this, I get a little bit nervous um, typically I will either come back here, like I'll get very comfortable. So like mirror and match and body language is so important, right? So if you see someone do this and you're talking to a high D person, the move is just kind of put your hand up like one handed, don't do both, but also show that you're super comfortable in the situation. And it might feel completely weird to you to do that, but I can promise you when you do this, you'll get massive respect from the person that's doing this to you. Um, just do it right back to them. But I can assure you that that conversation will get really interesting and really juicy. And let's move on to the next one. If people are putting, you see like uh, Chef Gordon Ramsay here is putting his hand in his face. Sometimes it's both hands like this. This means stupefied. They're like, ah, idiot. Or, ah, man, what am I thinking? Or, you know, it could be projected on yourself, could be projected on others, could be projected onto different situations. This one's pretty straightforward and simple. You've probably known about this one before. But just remember, when people do this, it's just typically because they are stupefied. Either they're stupefied in a bad way or sometimes in a good way, depending on the underlying emotion that you see on their face. So just kind of look for that. Um, and, and so when both hands go to the face, it means, ah, rats, like stupefied, okay? So that's the next one. And a pro tip here, the last tip I'm gonna share with you for today's high ticket tune-up is this. Somebody's wearing a hat, any type of hat, and they lift it and they leave it up. It typically means ventilation. And why does somebody need ventilation? The, peep, the reason that somebody needs ventilation is very simple, because they're stressed out, because things are going on in their world. Maybe there's the worst situation. There's uh, something that's popped up that they need to just like air out their head so they can think better. Uh, again, it's a very straightforward and simple one to kind of observe this. But as, as we are aware of it, just be, be looking for if they move their hat or they take it off, like and if they have good manners, like when I go eat, I'll remove my hat every time, right? It's just a habit that I've had. I, I was learning from a young kid, but when people are lifting their hat in a different way, it typically means ventilation. So it's under sudden stress, or it could mean uh, just like I said, they just need ventilation maybe when they receive some bad news or maybe they're stressed out about something at work. So if you see somebody pop the hat, uh, be sure to just ask the question, hey man, you doing okay? Everything all right? That's kind of the, the approach that I take. And, and with these tips, guys, I know this is gonna help you in your sales game. So I hope this was valuable for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm, I'm loving this, uh, this body language sequence that we're doing right now. I've got a lot more to cover. In fact, tomorrow we're gonna move into the forehead. So I'm gonna get real down and dirty. See, there we go, I'm stroking my hair. 
Um, I'm going to get into the forehead tomorrow. So we're going to talk everything forehead, what the wrinkles mean and all that other stuff. So by the end of this series, you're going to be a master when it comes to sales, body language, and you'll be able to close lots of deals. With that said, you've just been tuned up. You are that sales ascender. You're wonderful. You're great. And I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.